Agents are particularly powerful if you allow them not just to write code, but also execute code. The problem is if they execute code on your computer, there's the risk of files being deleted or sensitive information being shared. That's where sandboxing comes in, where you create a narrow environment without access to your files and maybe not even to the internet for agents to run code. And I'm going to show you the fastest and most secure ways of doing sandboxing in this video. In brief, one of the fastest and possibly most secure ways to have an agent run code is to use MCP Run Python, which is an MCP server that's been developed by Pydantic AI. This sandboxes your code or the agent's code in two ways. First of all, it runs it in WebAssembly. And second of all, it runs that via Dino instead of running it via Node. And neat Dino allows you to control the folders that this agent sandbox has access to and further control whether it has access to a network or not. And because this is run in WebAssembly, it's extremely fast to spin up and you don't lose time like you would with Docker images or by using something like Podman. Now, in this video, I'll go through the types of sandbox. So the main three categories are Docker Pogetman type approaches, which are slower, but they can be very secure. The Pyodide Dino approach, which is very secure, but it is limited in that it can run Python and some of the supported libraries in WebAssembly, but it's not able to run, say, um, PyTorch. It's not able to support CUDA either. And then the third approach, which is kind of the small agents approach, you can check out my video on small agents where they limit a Python interpreter in a few different ways that make it more secure but it doesn't provide the same level of security as the PyDi Dino approach uh, from Pydantic AI or the approach from Docker Podman. So I'll talk a bit about how uh, the small agents approach works. That's the C Python sandbox. I'll talk about how the MCP run Python sandbox works. That's the PyDi Dino. And then I'll give you a demo. I'll show a sandbox uh, with a Pydantic AI agent. So that's running an agent that can run code in the sandbox. And then I'll show you just how to run code in a sandbox. Uh, which doesn't need to have an agent. You could just want to run uh, some code maybe that you've generated on ChatGPT or some other place uh, and you want to run it sandboxed. So for all of this, I'm going to work out of the advanced inference repo. You can find the scripts on trellis.com forward slash advanced inference. I will describe everything and I'll link below the main open source repos so you can learn and build this for yourself. I have cloned the repo now, advanced inference uh, locally, and I've done that using Windsurf. And you'll see there's a folder now called Sandbox. So I've just moved into that folder and I've opened up the re README here in, um, in this README mode. And what I've included is a, t is a table comparing the three types of sandboxing approach. There's the Dino Pyodide, the Docker Podman, and then Restricted C Python. Now, the one I'm going to focus on is Dio Pyodide. This is what I recommend. And essentially, it is going to convert the Python code into WebAssembly and then it is going to run it using uh, a Dino runtime. And what that's going to allow you to do, because Dino has the feature, is to control the folders that it will have access to and also control whether it has network access or not. Now, this is quite fast. It should take well less than a second in order for this to work. So quite a bit faster than if you're using Docker or Podman. And this becomes a problem if you're trying to use Docker with an agent that's supposed to execute very quickly. Probably you can even get faster here because it's just going to take uh, so much time to, to run the image from even if you have it locally. The other approach, which I covered in small agents, is to take restricted uh, C Python approach. By the way, C Python, this is um, the Python implementation that you all generally use if you install Python on your computer. It's a C Python implementation. Pyodide is actually an other implementation of Python, and it's one that converts the Python into WebAssembly, which is a very concise form of code that can be run in browsers. And just as it can be run in browsers, it can be run using Node or it can be run using Dino. And Dino provides the advantage over Node that it's able to control the paths and control the network that it has access to. So that's why Dino is used for running it instead of running Node. Because it's in WebAssembly, it's very fast. And PyDide is what allows you to go from Python into WebAssembly. Now, I won't dwell on this, but just as a very quick example of how you could kind of sandbox using um, a restricted C Python interpreter. I'll show you this sample code I've put together here. It's a small agents demo. And it shows you a few of the key features that the small agent sandbox uses. The first is an abstract syntax tree. So it will convert, it will basically parse your Python code using an abstract syntax tree. And then it will go through that tree and check that it adheres to the limited set 
of libraries and imports that you have set. So basically you have a safe list that you're allowing of imports and libraries. And if anything unsafe, according to your list is found, it's not going to allow uh, the code to proceed. Furthermore, there's an operations counter. So we'll check that if the number of uh, operations goes above a certain amount, then it's just going to uh, break the loop. So this stops you from having uh, certain types of crash because of an overload or some kind of a code bomb. So you can see in the implementation here, this is uh, the abstract synt syntax tree gate, and it's doing some checks on the whitelist of imports that are allowed. It's forbidding um, certain dangerous attributes. And then it's also banning certain commands like exec, eval, and open. So yeah, this is a very simple implement implementation. It does provide some levels of protection, but it's not going to provide in particular the level of access path, uh, path access restrictions, say to your local folders, as you can achieve with PyoDi Dino or with a Docker Podman type approach. Now, moving on to explain a little bit how the PyoDi Dino approach works. I've made this graphic here with ChatGPT. And you can see C Python. This is the Python implementation you all have in your machines. It's uh, written in C code and it will combine, compile, compile to a native binary that will run on your operating system. And this will have access to a lot of uh, commands that are on your, say, Mac OS operating system. And this means it's not particularly well sandboxed or easy to sandbox. By contrast, PyDide is going to compile your code into WebAssembly, which is very terse language. It's very compact runs very fast, and that can be uh, executed using a Dino runtime, which is a Drav JavaScript runtime that has uh, the ability to control permissions, and we'll see how to control those permissions. And this means it's not going to be able to access folders or even the network if you specify that it cannot. So I'm going to show you an implementation now of running this uh, Pyodide Dino type approach. And what I'm going to need is to have installed uh, two things, Dino, and also I'll actually need to have installed UV. Now you can install UV with just pip install UV if you haven't got it installed, uh, but UV is going to help us to easily run the MCP server uh, by specifying uh, some supporting packages in, in just a one liner. We'll see that a bit later. So make sure that you have Dino installed on Mac OS. Um, you can use Homebrew or you can install it uh, using curl. Look up the commands if you're on Windows or, or Linux you want to. And next, we're going to just initialize uh, a project. So let me open my terminal here. And I'm going to CD into the sandbox folder. And I'll just initialize uh, an environment. Now, this is formally adding MCP, which is uh, a client. It's adding it as a requirement for anything we run here. Um, but you can also specify it using a width parameter here, for example. But I'm going to ensure that we have it defined. So I'll do UV init. And yeah, I've already got a project, so it's telling me because I ran that earlier. Now, one of the simplest ways you can run is to set up a Pydantic agent. And Pydantic agents allow you to pass in MCP servers. So if you create an agent and you pass in an MCP server that is MCP run Python, then it's going to allow you to, um, basically, it'll, it'll be allowed to access that sandbox for running any types of code. So here you can see a line where the agent has been defined. The name of the model is being defined here. Now note that you do need to pass an API key in in advance, and then you need to pass in um, the server, the servers, the MCP servers. And the server I'm passing in here is an MCP uh, ser server operating with uh, standard IO, and it's being run with Dino as opposed to Node, because Dino allows for closer access control. Specifically, we are allow allowing network access. This is because it needs to fetch some packages. We are then only allowing read access to the node modules folder and only write access to the node modules folder. So there's no access to any other folders on my machine. And we are going to look up the repository. And instead of being NPM, it's going to be JSOR. That's the Dino equivalent uh, for NPM. So we're looking up JSOR and we're looking for the Pydantic MCP run Python. And what this is, is a server developed by Pydantic AI. And you've got the same uh, similar types of commands here, but it runs uh, a sandbox that is going to be converting the code into WebAssembly and then can be run uh, using a Dino runtime. So once we have the server defined, we've passed it to the agent, we're then able to um, start a main function here where we're going to await the agent to run 
And it's going to run on this request, which is to calculate the 10th Fibonacci number. And I'll ask it also to share the program it ran to calculate it. And it will have access to this server. So you do need to first add in your Anthropic API key. So make sure you set that. You can use a different model, a different provider if you want, say OpenAI, just swap the model name and swap the API key. Copy paste this here, and then you can uh, run like this. So this should be executing in the background. And most likely Claude is going to call that sandbox and hopefully use the sandbox to calculate uh, the, the 10th Fibonacci number. So you can see it's sharing the code here. It's a fairly standard way to calculate. And yeah, it's able to find uh, the 10th number. By the way, sometimes it will give the 10th or 11th, depending on whether it counts zero as an actual uh, number. So here it's giving uh, the 10th number as 34, which is correct. And it's been able to run this code uh, within a sandbox. So that's a very simple agent example. I'll now show you how you can just run some code using the MCP server, but without necessarily having an agent. And to do that, you could define a piece of code. This is just a Python script. You can include uh, dependencies if you like uh, up here. And note that these dependencies are supported uh, in WebAssembly, whereas running with uh, CUDA, that would not be supported. Those libraries, also PyTorch, would not be supported either. So there's a limited set of libraries that you can use if you're going to be in WebAssembly. That is one of the drawbacks. But here I have a, a script. And what I want to do is run this script that's going to create uh, some sample data, print some information, print some mean standard deviations, min and max values. And I just want to run this script. You could, be, you could put in any script here that's supported uh, through Pyodide. And I want to run it using my sandbox runner. So what my runner is going to do is it's going to set up a server. It's going to use Dino. It's going to allow network access. Read write will only be from the node modules folder. And then we're going to define a function that's to run this, the code within the sandbox. So here we're basically using the standard IO client. We're going to initialize a session. We're going to list the available tools in the session. And the session is being initialized from client session, which is defined uh, by the MCP package. So you can see it's imported up here. And then we're going to await a, a tool call. And the tool call is going to be to run uh, Python code using that MCP server. And we'll get back a result here. And I think we're going to print the result. Let's see what we do when we call it down here. Yeah, we're going to print the result that we get back from running the run in sandbox function. So I can just uh, do UV run sandbox runner. And um, this is where it's important that I have got MCP defined within my requirements. You can see it's defined here. I think an alternative would be for me to pass in UV run with MCP. And then I could put cli here like this. And the correct way to do this, I've got the apostrophes in the wrong place here, is UV run with, and then wrap like this, MCP cli, and then sandbox runner dot py sandbox test dot py so i'm passing the script to be run by the runner and that's making available mcp and now it has run the script and you can see the sandbox execution result is is successful using these dependencies producing these statistics and uh, that has worked very well so there's one more quick example i'll show you which is a direct execution approach very similar to running uh, the, two, uh, the script here where I'm running a Python script using the runner. But here I'm going to directly execute in a Python interpreter. And for the direct execution, what you can do is set up a temporary environment with UVX and you can pass in MCP and then uh, Python. So this will set up a Python interpreter. Now copy all of this code here. What's this code doing? It's defining the server using, uh, it's defining the MCP server. It's defining a code snippet that's just going to print out uh, some random values. And then it's going to make a call to run that code within the sandbox. So I'll paste it in here, press enter twice, and that should allow the code to run. So here it is. It's returning back the statistics and returning back uh, the values here. So we've successfully run a piece of code just within the Python interpreter using UVX. So I'll exit now. And that is it for the demo of how to sandbox your code. 
I think this is a really nice lightweight approach that can allow you to do a lot of code execution and do it on your machine. You can, of course, use a service like E2B. That's fairly popular. You do pay by the second. It will spin up temporary instances. You can get more complex and you can run uh, fancier libraries that are not supported uh, in WebAssembly for now. If you really want to use uh, deeper packages, for example, you want to use PyTorch, then you may have to use Podman or Docker. So things will be a little slower, but you'll be able to implement more complex code. But for a lot of code execution, and given that some of the main libraries like NumPy are supported well within the WebAssembly framework, you should be able to use this Pydantic AI type approach in a lot of cases. All right, all the scripts I have put in the advanced inference repo, any of the links are below in the description. And let me know as usual if you've got questions in the comments. Cheers.